Do we ever have a special package to open today? Oh yes! Guys, I am so excited to be installing in this video these amazing solid motor mounts that come from B. Woody Performance. B. Woody, Woody, however you want to say it. <laughs> I have seen these mounts around a lot. I've seen other people repping them. I've seen them on Instagram a few times. And after shopping around for a while, I found that they were honestly the best deal and it seemed to be one of the best qualities out there. I'm all in at under $100 for both of these mounts. Booty has a lot of cool SRT4 related parts on their site. A lot of really cool stuff. You can even get these powder coated in a custom color. They have a list of different colors that you can actually choose from. I ended up going with the standard black. I think it's called Ring black dang these things are not so what are these this is like some sort of really hard poly insert maybe or god look at those welds i'm ready to make like 600 horsepower with these things <laughs> so i'm not sponsored at all by b woody or anything like that but shout out to them if you guys are looking for something like this i can already tell you this is some amazing quality stuff but anyways this is something i've wanted to do and to upgrade for a while i thought about doing poly inserts in like stock motor mounts but spending a little bit more money i wanted to go with something really solid and i'm honestly just genuinely curious as to what the difference is going to be as far as like idling and uh uh, noise and vibration, but all I know is my current motor mounts are so awful I think I showed it in one of the last videos But literally when I turn the wheel when I yank on it hard enough by hand the whole motor would shift and would rock in the engine bay Which was crazy, but a question I know a lot of you guys are going to have about the motor mounts is what about the middle motor mount? What about the motor mount that is down in where the timing and the water pump and everything is I forgot what the proper name for it is But there's a motor mount that's like the main mount and it's uh it's not on this side actually it's on the other side but it's like halfway up and there's like a giant torx bit bolt that goes through the side of the car and the fender lining and through the main support and into there's like a giant metal plate this giant rubber little little round thing in there flash a picture of it up on the screen what it looks like but uh, you guys were asking me if i was going to be replacing that no i'm definitely not going to be replacing that and honestly that in particular mount really has no bearing on engine rock it would help a little bit if it was uh in good shape which mine seems to be i'm not really worried about it at all that really does doesn't create a problem as much as the other mounts do. It's just there. But someday I think we'll definitely have to upgrade that one to some sort of race mount as well as, um, you know, drop the motor out and put cams in a race, uh, race timing belt in. Did I say that? But without further ado, let's do what you all have been waiting for. Let's go ahead and get this car pulled around and start installing these new mounts. All right, guys, well, here in my garage, got this uh, Boxer 2.5 swapped uh, PT Cruiser. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me, guys, my voice is still so messed up. I've been really sick lately. I actually took a whole day off from making videos, which is pretty rare for me. But if you haven't seen this video, be sure and click up in the corner and check it out. It was a really cool vlog. We actually visited a local Subaru meet up in Letchworth Park, and uh, we got some good memes in, as you can see. <laughs> first of all, um, we're going to do a leaf delete kit because weight reduction. So first, um, we're going to do the top mount. It's easiest to just remove these two bolts right here. And then this bolt here will just come out real quick. It might all be 15s. That might be an 18. I'm not sure. I'm just going to send it, I guess. <laughs> One eternity later. Oh my God, guys. Of course, that wouldn't just go easy for me. <laughs> but we got the old mount out, and that's what's important. I actually thought about removing this whole mounting plate thing just in order to get the bolt out, but this bolt back in here, you actually have to remove these AC lines to get it out. And it turned out that once I got this end of the motor mount unbolted and turned to the side, I had enough room I could fit a little 18 millimeter wrench up in there, get it on the bottom bolt, and uh, actually use the impact to spin it out. It's a little bit rusty, and it did not want to come out. The bolt is like built into the bottom of the plate and it's just slapping around in there right now. I don't know why, but thankfully, and especially with the new mounts, there should be enough room that I can put the wrench in there to tighten it down. But that was just my luck. So thanks to that little printout that came with our new motor mounts, now I know and I'm going to do this correctly because I probably wouldn't have otherwise, but this little mounting block, you're actually supposed to rotate 180 degrees when you put it on 
the new mount because it has this little notch out that the uh, old mount fits in. And of course you don't want that laying up against that flat surface. So we're gonna turn it around like this. This bigger bushing is the side that's gonna go here. And then the smaller one is gonna go in the car. Alright guys, well I am having a little bit of trouble to get the bolts in the little mounting block started again over here because I don't know why it's just not lining up quite right. I'm wondering if it's because the motor's been settled a little bit and stuff. You need to utilize a jack on the motor in order to uh, get things to line up correctly. And as you can see, I finally have one under it now. I went ahead and jacked the car up, took the wheel off, and jacked up on the oil pan a little bit. And now we are going to go ahead and replace this lower mount. And then we'll move back up to those bolts. And if we have to adjust the jack in order to get things lined up, we can. It was a little tight, but it worked. That bolt was a little bit rusty, but nothing that Big Bertha won't take care of. Wow, the brakes are in the way, so I have to pull this one out the old-fashioned way. What a shame. Pop goes the weasel. Okay, that was easy. All right. There we go. There is our old mount. That thing is nasty. So now I got this area cleaned up a little bit. You guys can see there's just little, like a roll pin, I think it is, or something like that right there, and that helps with aligning the mount. But we actually need to get rid of that for the new mounts, and like, if you guys are replacing with OEM mounts, obviously none of this will have to take place, but I have to because I'm doing fancy things, and uh, oh, that actually came out very easy. <laughs> Dang, it looks so pretty up in there. I don't even wanna like, <laughs> it's, it's just so sad that like, that's gonna be all covered up. You're never gonna see it. Okay, I think we finally got everything put back together. These bolts were a bit of a challenge. I ended up loosening the two bolts way back in here that hold this mount plate, as well as this bolt. I kept that loose, and I also kept the bolt that mounts in here loose. I wiggled them around a little bit. I even, I think, used a screwdriver at some point and gently pried, and I was able to finally get the bolts in. So it is a really tight fit. I also worked with a jack a little bit. So it was a little, little bit of a challenge, to say the least, to get the bolts to start. But I finally got it, got everything torqued down. The big bolts, that one there, as well as that one there that the pencil strut also connects to, they torque to 85 by manufacturer spec. The rest of them, just yeet them down with a small ratchet. They should be fine. Just use your brain. And yeah, remember that I'm kind of a backyard mechanic kind of guy, and I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> but anyways, now that we got those in, we should be able to throw the wheel back on and uh, put this thing on the ground, and we should be good to go, which I am so excited for. Now when I turn the wheel and, and yank on it, there's literally no play. It feels so solid. That is so weird. Okay, right, guys, so two things I forgot to update you on before about the PTGT that I mentioned in the last couple videos. The first thing is the alignment. In the last video, at the end of the video, I talked about how the alignment was off because I, we had just finished opening up the suspension and removing that CV axle and redoing that. I actually removed the ball joint to do it and always stuff like that will mess with your toe. So we ended up getting that taken care of. The car drives like a dream now. The alignment was just messed up and it was making the car kind of all over the road and act really weird. The other thing is that engine light that keeps coming on and off and all the codes that the car's been throwing and the way it's been misfiring sometimes when you cold start. It's still on and off and I have some potential solutions on the way so I don't really want to go too in depth on that because there will be video on that very soon soon but just know that I am gonna be working on it and right now it's okay it's just it's just acting kind of weird it's not too happy and I just put my GoPro on my head as you can see it looks really stupid and it also is dead for some reason the battery in my GoPro goes dead really easily and it's just it's weird so maybe we'll go for another yeet later with the GoPro on my head once it's charged up if we still have daylight Already, it feels so much more solid. Like seriously, that was like, it was almost weird. It, I don't notice any weird vibrations. I don't notice anything like that. It honestly feels exactly the same as far as vibrations are concerned, just a little bit more kind of planted in a weird way. Torque steer is still present. <laughs> Instead of the whole steering wheel, kind of turning because that's what would happen when I would torque steer the whole steering wheel would just kind of lean to the side and then when I let off the gas it would straighten up but now it just uh it just turns which is normally what torque steer is supposed to be but it was really weird before but I don't I don't notice that now like the steering wheel stays perfectly straight I'm going to 
gonna try to do a little bit of a pull coming up here down the road once we get into Mexico and uh, just kind of see how it feels when you're actually accelerating, you're actually you're hitting full boost or at least close to full boost. Oh, that was some rub. Also, whenever I would get into boost and I'd be boosting through second or third gear and I would let off quickly, it would just clunk and you'd feel just everything clunk forward. That's pretty brutal, but um, that's what I'm really curious to see about. All right, so we are gonna do a little bit of a pull here in second gear. Obviously in Mexico. Yeah, when I let off the gas, you guys, I don't know if you saw it, like, it was torque steering for sure, and I was compensating for it a little when I let off and straightened out, and, you know, it's always something you have to watch for in specifically front-wheel drive. This car isn't too bad, though, considering uh, the power band and everything, but, wow, what a difference. Seriously, it felt so planted, and when I let off, it didn't it didn't act weird at all. It's just the power stopped being delivered, and it straightened out. It was just normal. Also, look at this view. Look at the fall colors, man. I gotta admit, as much as I hate how cold it gets here, God, it's pretty. Look at that. Look at the pond. This is like an Amish house here. My God, this is such beautiful territory up here in Western New York. Also, whenever I want to be a jerk and try to shift like I have a manual trans in here, it feels really solid too because before when I would do that, like when I was showing off or something and I would try to like let off in between gears and shift like a manual with the auto stick, the whole engine, you could feel it just bucking in the engine bay and, and clunking and it was really just not cool. I look so stupid with this GoPro on my head, that's why I haven't been pointing the camera at myself. It feels so much better, the shifts. The shifts, that's what it is. I'm just over here driving, trying to figure out everything going on in my head, but I finally am figuring it out. The shifts, all the shifts, especially when you're getting the boost and you're, you're getting on it, everything shift-wise, transmission-wise feels so much better. Like seriously, guys, it feels way, 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 way better shifting, especially with auto stick shifting. A lot of you guys told me that that's something I was going to notice a difference in, and it's something I wasn't really thinking about, but now that I'm driving it and it's kind of processing in my head, I really feel a difference in the shifts and just how solid it feels. It's really incredible, honestly. The minute. All right, guys, well, it's getting awful dark. This GoPro does not like low light situations, so I apologize yet again if this looks terrible. I really need to upgrade the GoPro. This is like a first gen GoPro. Here we go. Oh, that felt so, oh my God. Dude, there was that tiny bit of boost lag, but like the whole time I was like planted in my seat. That felt so good, what the hell. The shifts are just so crisp. And before, probably the whole engine was rocking every time we were between gears and, and sometimes we would let off and stuff, it would clunk. Now it's all just so, so solid and so beautiful. That launch, you heard the tires. I didn't even turn traction control off and I was chirping all over the place. This thing launches hard now. It definitely needs to go to the quarter mile and we need to get some times just for fun. I need to go to test into night before it's too late. Honestly, it's so late in the year, it's not gonna be going on for much longer. What do you guys think? Drop a thumbs up if you think that would be a cool idea if we head over to the quarter mile, get some times, and then, you know, when we tune this thing and, you know, have some fun with it, we could go back again and just see how much we really improved. That would be really, really fun. God, I need to make that happen. All right, guys, well, you probably can already guess what I'm going to say, but in conclusion, do I recommend going solid motor mount? Is it really not necessary? Is it a bad idea? Does it change the ride quality, the noise, the sound, the vibration, anything? My answer to that is yes, absolutely. I recommend them. That is a huge, huge, huge difference that I am noticing already. And as time goes on, like for me, it's not like a light bulb moment when I do things like this. Once I drive the car, put some miles on it, it's when I really just, it soaks in almost. And even just driving it for like 20, 30 minutes tonight, I can already tell you that it shifts way differently. It just feels more planted. Everything is completely different and it was a huge mod, especially considering that the ones I had in there were such junk. Vibrations, noises, and all that kind of fun stuff, I didn't notice any difference myself. If you're really fussy and you really felt for it and listened for it, you might feel a little bit of a different vibration, but really nothing different. If anything, I could hear the motor just a tiny bit more. I don't know that. That could just be me being uh, absolutely psycho, but no real differences, no weird vibrations to idle. Even though these are solid, 
on motor mount set is there that like I don't know what it is poly or something some sort of insert in the mount itself so if they're huge also it's gonna probably help preserve the life of the main mount down in there because with those not doing their job the main mount that's like part way down the motor is doing all the twisting and now nothing's twisting really and um, that's gonna help that do its job better too and just everything is gonna feel so much more solid now and I highly recommend these be woody or woody or however you want to pronounce it motor mounts that brand turned out being really nice really really good quality stuff if you have any questions or comments leave them down below and please 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 smash that thumbs up button if you did enjoy this video and if you love seeing mods happen to the PT Cruiser it seems like those videos always do the best when we're switching up something on the PT GT and making it go faster and look better so again let me know and help out the channel by hitting that thumbs up button check out all our sponsors down in the description if you want to continue to help support us and again thank you so incredibly much for watching this quick little channel CG video you rock God bless you guys, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.